Hi everyone and welcome to Kuiper Labs. Uh, in this video we're going to be introducing the concept of the food chain. Okay, so thinking about um, how food chains work in an ecosystem and what they can tell us and how we would draw them um, and we'll give you some examples just to keep things short and sweet. I know that you've encountered the, the concept of a food chain before um, so in that sense this will be revision um, to a degree um, but we'll get some examples um, to be able to, to kind of put things together. Alright, so let's begin. Now when we're thinking about a food chain, okay, so we're thinking about so something that shows um, the flow of energy in the ecosystem um, via feeding relationships. Okay, so um, the idea of it being the flow of energy is really important here. Okay, so that's that's a key idea that I really want you to hammer home to you. Okay, that the whole reason that we eat food is as a source of energy. Okay, if we don't eat food, um, we get hungry. If we continue to not eat food, we don't have enough energy, and eventually our bodies die. Okay, that's that's the whole thing. We keep um, we keep eating food as a source of energy, as a fuel to keep our bodies going. That energy gets used for all sorts of useful things inside our bodies to keep us alive, controlling our temperature, keeping our brain functioning, our heart pumping, our blood flowing, all of those sorts of things involve energy. All of the cells in our body need, need that energy to survive. So we, because we are not organisms that can make our own food, we need to get it from somewhere else. Okay? And so, but, um, but what we see in, in, a, in an ecosystem in a, in a broader sense is that um, it's not that every organism eats everything else, that things tend to happen in patterns. Some organisms eat more, um, have a, a bigger variety than others, but we want to see how that energy kind of flows um, through an ecosystem, and a food chain is a great way for us to be able to show that. Okay, And one of the key aspects of it um, is that it involves us drawing arrows. Okay so that they show the flow of energy whoop, of energy and they go into the organism doing the eating okay now that's really important here that you are, that can understand the direction of why arrows go the way that they do because they show the energy going into the thing, the organism that's be, that is eating. Okay, so that energy is going into the organism eating, so that that arrow shows that. Okay, it's really easy or really tempting to show. Oh, the the arrow going the other way, showing this organism eats the other one, and so then that's kind of that's showing like the eating by using the arrow. Don't do that. Get out of the habit. Smack yourself on the hand if you have to. Okay. Don't do that. That's what the arrow goes into the organism doing the eating. I'll show you in a second. Okay, so let's let's give ourselves a bit of a clean space here, and to um, give you an example. All right, so we start with uh, starts with a pro producer. Okay, so um, uh, so some something that is able to produce its own food. So maybe we might be thinking, you know, green plants, for example. Okay? It doesn't have to be, but they're, but they're, but that would be a good one. Okay? Um, and then we move on to consumers. And then we have first order. So, so then we kind of look at it in terms of, all right, what, what does, what's eating the producer first, and then what eats that? and what it's that, and so on. Okay, and so we assign a number to kind of where we find those consumers in the in the, the hierarchy, in that, that kind of level. All right, so it always starts with a producer, and then we move our way up by a different consumers. Okay, so let me let me illustrate with an example. Okay, um, let's say, all right, we have, start with a producer. Okay, grass. Okay, so it's a producer. It uses energy from the sun, um, takes in carbon dioxide and water, turns it into glucose and oxygen um, all by itself to help keep itself alive. Okay, so then we're going to think about an organism that eats grass. 
All right, so let's go with a cow. Okay, so this is what we would call our first order consumer. Okay, so our first order consumers are herbivores. Okay, because they're eating the plants. Now, they don't always have to, sorry, just to clarify, they don't always have to be herbivores um, only because it could be an animal that eats plants and animals and it just happens and we're just thinking about it eating plants. Okay, so we're thinking generally herbivores. Okay, but let's, I'll take, I might take that out just to kind of help with a bit of clarity there. Okay, so gra the grass is eaten by the cow. The energy from the grass flows into the cow through the process of eating, and then the energy from the cow, let's say, flows into us as a human. Okay, when we eat the cow. Okay, we eat the cow, it's eat the grass. It's a little bit like the little old lady who swallowed a fly. Okay, you follow it all the way up. Okay, so we in this situation are a second order consumer. Okay, we're the, the second rank up the food chain. So the arrows go from the grass to the cow, from the cow to the human. And then you know, we're not considering anything being, you know, eating us as the human, we tend to be the top of the food chain. Okay, that we that's kind of where it stops. Um, okay, but notice the direction of the arrows here, that it's not saying, all right, what's going from the human to the cow, and then from the cow to the grass to show that the eating direction, it's the energy flow. Okay, so energy flow is represented there. Okay, um, all right, so let's have a let's look at another quick example then before we wrap up. Okay, um, all right, so let's say let's talk about a marine ecosystem now. All right, so we're talking about green algae. Okay, so it's still a producer; it's a type of plant that just happens to live in water. It uses sunlight in the same way to turn to produce its own food. Okay, um, all right, so let's let's just say rather than picking a specific species, let's just say a small fish. Okay, first order consumer. All right, maybe it's a clownfish. I don't know, maybe, or maybe, a, I don't know, a brim or something like that. Okay, then let's say a larger fish. Okay, again, I realize it's a bit non-specific, but second order consumer. Okay, so the algae is eaten by the small fish, which is eaten by the larger fish, and let's take this one to the next level. Let's say a shark. Okay, seems an appropriate sort of thing to put up here. So this would be a third order consumer. Okay, because um, all of that energy is flowing up through, so first level, second level, third level. Okay, now, um, what happen the, the reality, what happens here, just to... to to by way of quickly kind of wrapping things up, is that we start with a big amount of energy, and then what happens is that as we move our way up, is that the energy, available energy, decreases. You know, as we, we some of it gets used up by the, the, you know, the energy from the algae gets used up by the small fish. Some of it gets used up by the larger fish. Some of it gets used up by the shark. So. As you go through, the available energy decreases. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more about why as in, in a further video. Okay, but it, that means that depending on where the animal is in the food chain, that affects how much it has to eat to stay alive. Just like how big it is will also do that. Okay, so what you can see just quickly here, you can see that what I've done, I've um, used the roles of the, the animals in these, uh, the organisms in this ecosystem to kind of put them in a sequence. We have arrows to show the flow of energy into the organism doing the eating, um, and we can trace it in a straight line. In a line, you know, I've done. I happen to do a horizontal line here from algae all the way through to shark. You could do it kind of vertically as well, or you could do some sort of other, yeah, slightly more creative arrangement. But the idea is that you can trace it from start to finish. Okay, that's a key kind of concept with a food chain. Okay. So, in this video, we've talked through what a food chain is, how we use arrows to show something important, and gone through a couple of examples, showing you how we label the organisms in a, in a food chain, and based on where they fall in the, the, the system, in the hierarchy, affects what label that we give it. Um, I hope that that's uh, helped to clear things up. Let me know if you've got any questions. All right, thanks for watching. Bye for now.